we want you to be. We feel like you're a part of us. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. We, we thank you on this plan. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. That you would want to come and worship with us. Hallelujah. As we glorify God on this morning. For all his goodness and all that he's done. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Lord, I thank you this morning. I just want to thank
Yeah.
This is what God has done for me and my life. And I thank you. Um, yeah, bear with me. I hear very much. Um, since I was 15, I was raised in church, but I played a part of church where, you know, I done to my family. I'd go to church and I'd go out and go party on the weekend. This led me to a down spiral of uh, shame and guilt and resentment. I thought I knew it all. Um, the party and stuff led me more increasingly to uh, party drugs. Uh, my second semester in high school as a senior, I was kicked out of school. And I had to uh, find my own way and stuff. And this led me to thinking that I could do it all again, so I started to sell drugs. And to turn 20, 21, 22 in Crossway. So when I came out, I was very angry and bitter. I didn't learn nothing. My family tried to push me towards God, and I was prevailed against it. I done everything in my way, and I thought I'd do it all again. So this led me to a deep addiction um, since I was 15 till 33. And, uh, I finally decided, you know, my way won't be way. I never, everything I've done always led me to anger, bitterness, everything I was ever looking for. I realized that it's in the world of God. He will set you free if you're just willing to listen. Amen. Amen. There's, there's nothing else that can do with it. I want to be you to You have to be willing to. You have to surrender your heart. You have to be serious about it. You can't play God. You can't play the church. They don't need you to know anybody that the hell or the cross of us and believe them. Amen. That's, that's what God has done for me. And for this time, I've only been at Team Challenge for nine days. He has restored the relationship with me and my sister. I pushed her away for nine years. I wouldn't speak to her and nothing like that. She didn't listen to me. I was just angry and bitter because she always tried to help me. Um, me and my family, my brother, I had four siblings. We're all close to me and I, except for one of them I'm working on that. I had 33 years for it. So I've been here with my mom in my room. She said she never thought she would live long to see me get here. And that shows you what God will do for her. So, uh, I want to thank God for all the Challenge, you know, I just learned that you know, God can 
put us in pain and other stuff like that just to equip you to, you know, maybe minister to others because there's always somebody out there going to do something worse than what you want to do. You know, I think about, you know, what Jesus did. I don't think any of us has been through what he been through, you know, the pain and the ministry that he went through, being nailed on the cross. I don't think there's no pain that can compare to that. Uh, so uh, I'm glad to be a, a member of the Teen Challenge. I've learned a lot. I've, uh, I've got my mind back, control over my thoughts. I got joy and peace in my heart. You know, yeah, and joy and bring that to my family. So I was just kind of ashamed to, you know, my family. I knew that they knew what I was doing. I was just kind of ashamed to go around them and, you know, face them because I knew I was going to get to talk, you know. But I'm glad that, you know, I'm here. That, you know, God put me out of it. Uh, you know, uh, he never turns back on me. He never leaves his side. And, you know, that's all I got. Thanks for being here.
the Bible says that we will recognize each other by our fruit. We will know that they are his disciples by the fruit that they bear. So we can't hold somebody to a standard that is not bearing fruit if they're not of Christ. If they're not bearing fruit, then they're not of Christ. Sometimes we can be in Christ for a very long time and still not bear any fruit. We can be in Christ for 40 years and still bear a shower. So, the Bible says that we're going to be pruned, right? We have to go through a pruning process. And it's because of God, the divine treasure, that He prunes us. Pruning hurts. Nobody wants to be pruned. But He cuts us back so that we can produce more fruit. So that we can produce better fruit. That's right. That's right. That's right. So we come through this, this thing where we want to go into Christ and we say, Lord, why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to go through the suffering? Why do I have to lose this in my life? Why does this hurt? Why is that that way? Yeah, yeah. We go through pruning to produce good fruit. Gold. Gold has to reach 1,943 degrees before it can melt. Before it can melt, the scrape off, I mean, when it melts, the scrape off the top, it drops. The impurities. We have to go to fire to burn off the impurities. If we want to be like Christ, if we want to be near Christ, we cannot carry our sin into the love of Christ, into the presence of Christ. He will put us through the fire. Yes. Because he cares more about your eternal character than he does your present comfort. He cares more about who we're going to become in the kingdom than he does today how we feel. So when we go through trials and we go through pruning, Paul says that we're supposed to take joy in our trials, right? How is that possible? <laughs> how, how many of us have ever suffered and said, Lord, thank you that I'm going through this suffering? <laughs> Nobody. We don't want to suffer. It's our human flesh. It's our human nature. We don't like to suffer. We don't like to go through fruit. But everybody wants the fruit. We all want to bear that good fruit. Because we see Christ. We see Jesus. We see the fruit that he has. And we want that fruit. We know that it's good. But we have to go through the fire. We have to go through the pruning to start to produce that fruit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So whenever you're going through a trial, try to rejoice and know that God is producing major fruit out of you. Yes. You see, we all want to live on the mountaintop, but we've got to go through the valley to get to the mountaintop. Nobody wants to go through the valley. If we lived on the mountaintop all the time, we wouldn't be Jesus. We start to put Jesus on the shelf. Think about when you're in the battle. How much depth and crying out of your soul that you do in the battle. We lean on the Lord so much differently in the battle. I know I do. But the faith that I have on the mountaintop is the product of the faith that was built in the battle. So true faith, true faith is built in the battle. Thank you for having us today. I thank you for letting us uh, share. And I thank you for always working on us. We are going to give a round of praise for what you're doing in your dreams, right? We are going to give a round of praise for what God is doing in your dreams.
Thank you, Lord. For using these men and what you're doing in their life. I thank you, Lord, for letting me see this today. What you're doing in these men's life today. What greater anniversary to see that over the years when they was coming and see the maturity and the growth of what God has been doing in their life. These songs that they've been singing today, they've been living what they were singing. I've been changed. I've been delivered. And I've been set free. You can't sing that song if you ain't there. I'm, I'm, I'm just sorry. I, I'm, 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 I apologize, Pastor, if we're out of order. But when I see God move, and when I see God, God, when God is being who He is in people's lives, I have to take the time out to thank Him for what I can see, what He's doing in other people's lives. So that gives me inventory to do what I got to do sometimes too, to get my life right. You know what I'm saying? So we all pray. The man said we be in the back till we get to the mountaintop. He said something right there. We all gotta to come to the glory of God and ask for forgiveness. We all Praise God yes, for the things God has done in his life. Yes. Can we have a picture now and Praise the Lord. 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 to the Lord. Praise 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 the we um, honor God on today with this great man of God. Yes. 19 years ahead. Yes. Yes. Um, God had always had his hand on it, but he brought his initiative. 
get the message at 16 years old. Glory to God. And uh, the Lord called him and he met me and he keep telling me, he was telling me before, the Lord said this, and the Lord said that, and, 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 and he was just witnessing about God. And then he, I came from work one day, I got out and he met me at the uh, car. He said, Mama, I got something to tell you. I said, no, you accept the calling of the Lord. And he said, yeah, the Lord called me to preach the gospel. And he was 16 years old.
before I do that, what an honor it is to stand in the presence of the Lord. Um, you know, it's hard, I'm going to be honest, it's always a blessing to come here, but it's hard to leave our home. We've got so many people in, in our own home church, and, and sometimes the call is hard when you have to leave your comfort place, as the man of God mentioned earlier, leave in that comfort place to be able to do something else. But every time we come here, the presence of the Lord is always here. And so I am very, very, very thankful that no matter where I am, the presence of the Lord is there. No matter where I go, the presence of the Lord is going to be there because He's within me. And He's surrounding me. And He goes before me. And so I'm very thankful for that. And I am very thankful for my man of God. And um, the Lord put us together over 26 years ago. And um, I've got to watch Him grow. And he's got to watch me grow. Yeah. And I can say that as he stands this morning, he's going to preach the word that the Lord has given him. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a man that's going to sugarcoat it. He's that's not right. a man that's going to hold back and say, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. But he's a man that's going to preach the word. Trust me, he preaches to me as well. <laughs> but he is a man that's going to preach the word. And he is a man of the word. And yeah. Yeah. He's, he's not putting on a show this morning. He's not saying something just because it's certain way, but he is a true man of God, and I'm very thankful for him this morning, so preach. <laughs> <laughs> she said preach. preach. Amen. It's awesome, awesome to be in the house with you today, amen, my family. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, yeah. feel like I'm at home. I, I do, uh, we do miss sometimes our home Church, we're very busy there, God, and I thank God for that. We have been wide open, amen. God is moving uh, in our men's ministry, in our ladies' ministry, that we are so grateful to be part of and uh, be able to uh, meet those groups of men and women and see what God is doing, amen. But man, how awesome when I come here, amen, to see what God has done. Just this my last visit, amen. But God is moving in a mighty way. 19 years. 19 years. And if I heard you right, 14 countries. Is that correct? 14 countries. Y'all too quiet. You didn't hear me. 19 years, 14 countries. Amen. What started as just a few, look what God has done. Amen. And I believe, church, that this is only the beginning for this house. Amen. And I don't say that just to be saying that. I feel that in my spirit that God is still birthing some things. Amen. There's still some things that's going to come to pass. Amen. Some things that you don't even know about. And maybe it's just a seed. The brother must have been reading my notes this morning. Amen. But apart from the Bible, we can do nothing. Amen. But when we tie into him, Pastor. Amen. Look what God can do. I said, look what God don't get quiet on me, amen, because I just get, if you get quiet, I just get loud, amen, amen, because God has been so good, amen, I thank God for that worship, amen, what an awesome, amen, just experience, amen, to feel God, and to feel the words, that song, I love them all, but it said, I won't go back, it says, I can't go back, amen, I hear my name in that every day, Every day, amen. Every time a little obstacle comes up, every time a wall comes up, amen, he tries to get me to turn around. He tries to get me to go back, amen. But can I tell you, I didn't leave anything back there, amen, that I need today, amen. All I need is him. And I said, all I need is him. Amen, he is so good. Amen, I'm trying. Amen. Pastor, I was praying a few weeks ago. I just wanted to share a personal word. I was praying a few weeks ago, and God showed me a seed, and it's about the size of my hand. Amen. About the size of my hand. Yeah. Amen. And I seen that seed, and it was like I was under the ground with that seed. I seen the dirt all around that seed, but that seed was there. Amen. And something began to happen. Amen. The earth began to shake. The soil began to shift. And that seed began to sprout. Amen. And 
started to grow, amen, and it started to expand. Amen. It wasn't long it began to break the surface. And I'm here to tell you, amen, I know there's still some seed. But I see God moving it. It may have been planted for a long time, but I see God shaking it. Amen. I see some things happening, and I believe that you're entering into your season. Amen. But those things are going to begin to break ground. Amen. And I just want to share that with you today because I believe God is going to bring those things to pass sooner than you think. I believe he's working. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want to share a word with you this morning. In the book of Haggai. Yes, sir. Haggai. And it's so short, I might have just go through the whole book. Amen. But I've been in this book for a long time. And I can't seem to, to get away from it. And so I'm just going to speak from my heart this morning. I don't try to be like anyone else. Amen. 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 Like the brothers were sharing. Amen. I just got to, to be me. Yeah. And with him, that's enough. Yes. See, he don't ask me for something I don't have, but he asks for all of me. Yeah. Amen. And I learn as I surrender on a daily walk with him as I begin to surrender every area of my life. Man, the places he leads me and the things that I've been able to see is just amazing. Amen? And it's not me. It's all him. My prayer was this morning, God, and every day that, Lord, if it's, if it's, not, it's not about me, I just want you to show up. I just want you to show up. Not believe he showed up this morning. I believe he's here this morning. Amen. I believe his presence is here today. Amen. This is no doubt a house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm here today as a child of the Most High. Amen. And I'm like David. I enter in with prayer. Come on. Amen. I don't have to be stoked up, fired up. Amen. Or prodded. Come on. But I come in with a praise on my heart because I know where I was. And I know where I am. And I know I wouldn't be here today if it had not been for grace. And it had not been for His mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all pray for my voice this morning. I know the devil was a liar. Haggai, book of Haggai, chapter 2. Yes. Amen. Verse number 19. Now just keep your place there because I'll probably be all over this book here. But the verse 19 just popped out at me as I was studying. It says, Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not brought forth from this day. Somebody say from this day. From this day. Will I bless you? Amen. And that was a word from the Lord. Is the seed yet in the bowl? Amen. God planted a seed here in Greensboro, North Carolina, 19 years ago. A seed, it didn't look. The thing about a seed is it doesn't always, you can't look at a seed and see a tree. Come on. You don't look at an acre and see an oak tree. Amen. But inside that seed is everything that it will ever be. So you might just have a seed. You might just have a promise. You might just have a word. Oh, but inside that seed, come on somebody, is everything that you need, amen, to fulfill what God has called you to do. Come on. But I'm asking you this morning, is the seed yet in the barn? I asked to see on the counter of the house that someone gave me our bulbs, if you will, for lilies. And I got them in a bag on the counter. And they've been there for weeks, months. Because 
it'll be warm weather before I plant those bulbs. In that bag, it doesn't look like lilies. Nothing in common with lilies at all. Just a little green bulb. Amen. Amen. And I tell you, it's going to stay that way until come spring when I plant that in the soil. Yes. Yeah. I'm here with a word this morning for somebody. Yes. Don't neglect the seed. Yes. Don't neglect the seed that God has given you. Don't neglect the talent. God is giving me. Don't think it's not enough. Don't think that I'm not good enough. I'm not big enough. I don't speak well enough. I ran for my call. Personal testimony. Because I was always shining backward. I didn't, didn't talk to folks much. I wasn't me. But I said to myself, and I've always had an issue with my own voice. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. I struggled through school. I don't know this is, I wasn't planning this, but God knows. It's all right. But I struggled through school. I struggled with suicide. I struggled with depression. I had some physical issues that I wasn't like everyone else. I felt like I was standing outside the circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then God, one night on an altar, He'd been dealing with me a long time. And I went to an altar and prayed that night in a little country church, on the very south part of Davidson County. And I felt God tugging at me once again. And so I lay a feast before the Lord. You don't hear that word much anymore. No. Because I didn't want it because somebody else told me. I didn't want it because I wanted it. I didn't want it for my sake. But I wanted to be in the will of God. Amen. Amen. That night, I took a seed. Yes. And I planted it on an altar of prayer. I planted it in some fertile ground yeah. when my brothers and sisters prayed with me. Mm -hmm. And before the night was up, God gave me the answer. Before the service was up, God gave me the answer. Yeah. And I had to stand and walk into what God had for me. Scared out of my mind. Because yeah. I knew you once I said it. <laughs> I had to do it. And to, to this day, I don't claim to be the greatest, but I'm not here to impress man. That's right. But I want to enter in and hear him say, well done. Not just, all right. Not just halfway, but well done, my good and faithful servant. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
But you know these seed, and the brother goes on that what to go about the fruit and about being connected, amen, to God, amen, and about the fruit. And sometimes he has to cut some dead stuff off. I think last time I was here, I was telling you that, you know, sometimes I, I God, I need someone me to die so that some of them can come alive in me because I don't want I want to see you to see me less and you to see him more in everything that I do. Not just behind the pulpit, not just with a microphone, but in the way I walk. So many times though we pray for something in God, amen, He'll give us a seed. Mm -hmm. We get discouraged. That's right. Because that seed don't look like a house. That's right. <laughs> Come on. That seed, amen, don't look like my family. All right, all right. That seed don't look like my calling. That's right. That seed don't match the picture that I know you gave me, and we get discouraged and we get frustrated. And we eat the food and discard the seed. Come on. Come on, bro. But if we learn the power and the anointing of the seed, everything that you can ever want is in the seed. The Bible even tells us that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds in the world, that we can speak to mouth. He goes on to say that that, that seed will grow up so strong yeah. that people get that the animals can rest. I almost say brothers and sisters can rest on what God is doing. If we will learn to not discard the seed. A seed is imperishable in its maker. I'm here to tell somebody that you might have thought hope was gone. You might have thought it's way past my time. I'll never see what I thought I was going to see. But I'm here to tell you that God's seed is in pairs. In pairs. And before I get ahead of myself, I want to remind you that if you look over our Roots Gospel and study about the sower and the seed, amen, on down, amen, in about the 11th verse, it says that the word is the seed. So maybe you have a word. Maybe God has shown you something. Maybe God has spoke to you. Amen. And place that seed in your heart. The barn. See, the seed comes from Him. Are you just storing it? Or are you using it? Before this promise came to the children, if you look back in the first part of that guy. Amen. He chastened them for spending more time on their personal wealth uh -huh. and discarding the house of God. Right. They stopped the work on the house of God. That's right. And he said, well, because you stopped the work there in verse 6, it says, you have so much and bring in little. Yep. Yep. You drink, but you're not filled. You're clothed, but you're not warm. Right, right. You're earning the wages, but it's like putting in a bag with a hole. That's right. That's right. Oh, bear them in. Right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't know about you, but I serve a God of war. I serve a God of more than enough. Y'all pray for me. Amen. But he said, if you build my house, he said, I can turn that around. Mm -hmm. And I tell you today, you brought, God brought you here. That's right. It's not a mistake. God connected you here. It's not a mistake. Mm -hmm. Amen. God has a plan and a purpose for your life, and He's trying to get you to sow into some fertile ground. Uh -huh. I believe that this is fertile ground. Yes. 
Come on. And I'm here to tell you that if you're so into what God has placed you in, you'll begin to see things move because, listen, the seed is bigger than me. The vision is bigger than one. Come on. And it takes you, whether it's holding a door, whether it's giving a little more of your time, praying more for this house and for your leaders. Come on. But I said, you, you can't neglect the house of God. You can't neglect my temple, my tabernacle. And there are too many lying in their pockets in the name of the gospel. Come on. Now, I serve a God that will prosper you. But at the same time, I mean, so many of you are just preaching to line their pockets. So when you find a house full of resistance, when the man of God stands on the word of God, uncompromising, it's time to make a slow seat. And if you say that, the first thing people do is grab their wall. But can I tell you, it goes deeper than that. It goes deeper than that. Because they may even, if you drop it in the plate, I mean, if you, if you have not if you have not connected, if you have not contributed, if you have not been praying, if you have not been seeking God, if you have not been saying, Pastor, what do you need me to do? You still fall short. It's like tithes. That's something you're commanded to. Offer it. That's your gift. Come on. But we need to sow seed, whether that's sweeping the floor, Cleaning the parking lot. Welcoming welcome visitors. Yes. Singing in the choir. Playing the instruments. Man, that was awesome. Awesome to hear. I wanted to jump on that bass and, and go on with it. Amen. Amen. When I'm not when I'm not away from the church on Sunday mornings, that's where I'm sitting. Is up playing the bass. Never played the bass before. And I'm, this is not about me. But I was actually working at the door, working, helping with the sound booth, doing whatever I needed to do. I was always at the back, helping. Yes. And Pastor had faith a long time ago that put a bass, went and bought it, uh-huh. and put a bass up on stage and it was sitting in the corner. And I watched that thing week after week after week, uh-huh. just collecting dust. Right. I played guitar since I was little. Uh-huh. I'm playing to be. Great, but I, I love the guitar. I didn't know nothing about this. Amen. But God spoke to me one morning, and I turned to the Pastor, we were both in the sound booth, and I said, Pastor, I said, his son is just musically gifted, our praise team leader. He can play anything. I said, if Tyler will help me learn the basics, I'll play that bass for you. And I kind of said it just in passing. But in passing to I said, okay, take it home. And start learning. <laughs> what I'm getting at is when we start to sow into something, it's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you time. you got to put your personal stuff. When you pray, how much of your prayer is about me? About you? Come on. I heard someone say one time before that we don't even take 30 seconds after praying to give God a chance to talk. Hey. And I don't know about you, but in my and my wife's relationship, I can't do all the talking all the time. And I always say I do a lot of it. She's shaking her head and But sometimes I got to just, I got to listen. See, God is talking, but some of you are not listening right now. I mean, we're about our business. We're doing our stuff. And God's blessed me with a job. Thank God for that. Amen. He's blessed me with a home. Thank God for that. But be weary. I mean, be careful. Do not let the blessing get in the way of the blessing. Because before you know it, you're going to turn around and the blessing will be gone. Come on. But we got to put our faith and our trust in Him. And we got to build this So we got to do some self-evaluating. God, how am I spending my time? 
love and His mercy in just this week. But we say, God, I give you my life, and yet we revolve our life. We revolve Him, or put Him in the center, revolve our life around Him. Trying to get that, make that make sense. But if you look past where we just stopped, it goes into holiness and uncleanness. If I'm unclean, I cannot walk into the things that He has for me. Come on. See, we plan to see that there's a process. Amen. Sanctification. You don't hear that as much anymore. But I wonder if we begin to work on this house as much as we focus on our house. If we begin to work on this building as much as we focus on the building. Come on. How much greater would the kingdom of God be? Because we're not building a church. We're building a kingdom. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes, he's here this morning. He's across the world with our other brothers and sisters with a one body jointly fit together. Moving in one motion toward the kingdom of God. He's coming back after one brother. We gotta start moving and doing the work of God so that we can see. He said that I'm gonna shake some things. Man, sometimes shaking hurts. Huh? It hurts sometimes. And listening to the brother's testimony, and I shared some of mine. Sometimes there's dark moments, man, they hurt. I ain't gonna stand here saying because I because I went to church Sunday, I, everything's okay. No, it hurts. But what I found out, I love what the man of God said. Yeah. I told my man in the church that many times, but he's more concerned about your character yeah. than you come. Yeah. Thank you, God, for sharing that. Yeah. But he's, he's more concerned about you. Yeah. So I don't want to be part of this blessing now, because I'm playing no church. He's going to bless me now, but I'm, I'm going to trust you. He said he'll give you desires of your heart. That's right. The problem is our desires sometimes don't line up with his heart. Yes. Oh, come on. Come on. He don't care. God, God loves it when, when you can step into a new house, so you can step into a new car, a new job. He loves that stuff. He does that. He opens those doors. It's all him, amen. But where is our heart really? Where is our seed really? Come on. But I began to see that seed shake. Begin to shout. I took that word myself as well. I have seeds planted that I haven't seen in return from. It's been a long time. I heard a, a story one time about the bamboo and about how it grows. Said the seed will lay dormant for almost five years. Water it every day. Five years. Some of us are like, God, if we're here by next week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But five years, you have to wait. But can I tell you when the thing breaks the surface of the ground? Oh, now, I can't remember the exact, but when it breaks the ground, in one year's time, mm-hmm. one of the fastest growing plants that we have. Yes, I'm talking about towering within a year. Yeah. Five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I feel on my heart to tell somebody this morning, this is your time. Yeah. It's going to start breaking ground, Pastor. Thank you, as you step into year number 20, I believe God is going to do some extravagant things. I believe God's going to raise the ceiling, if you will. Amen. I believe that we're going to be looking up in awe at what God has done in this 20 years. Amen. Come on. It starts with the 
mercy of holiness. We got to prepare to do whatever it takes to live a whole life. Amen. Amen. See, the church body is a product of what you do at home. God has changed your life. He's a creator. 
But he put it in his scheme and he told us to tend to it. How are we tending to the seed? He said, Is the seed getting the ball? In other words, he tell him, I'm going to bless that seed. Trust me, I'm going to bless that seed. You've not seen it increase before, but you will now. I'm going to bless you. Amen. And all those trees that's not producing that's already out there, he said, I'm, I'm going to bless them too. Come on. And then he goes on in verse 22. I'll get ready for us. He says, And I will overthrow the thrones and kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and the riders shall come down, every one by his sword, by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I make thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shalem, yes. saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet, yes. for I have chosen thee, yes. saith the Lord of hosts. Yes. When we place it in his hand, yes. it begins to multiply. He said it will overthrow all those that want to build the throne in this world. Oh, come on. They want to build up things in this world and, and blatantly and openly sin against God. Yes. But God said, My truth will overthrow. Yes. Glory. My glory. seed, my word, will overthrow. My word, my word will not be I don't care what you face in today. All you need is a word. I said, All you need is a word. Amen. And, and if you'll just plant that seed, that word that God has given you today, amen.
A lot of cold fronts, a lot of changes comes in, and wind will begin to blow. And blow it across. And I felt a wind, and I felt like I need to share that with this house this morning, and there's a wind blowing. There's, there's season shifting. Time changing. Moment ahead. Come on. And if we'll just learn to cast our seed in the wind. See, when we look around and we see the trees dying, we see the plants dying, amen. They're not, it's not all death. No, no, no. They're seed in there. No. And when the wind begins to blow, it carries the seed and it replenishes the earth. Come on. That's why when you got one old tree, but before too many years, you'll have three, you'll have four, and you got nothing because of the wind. Yeah, 
If I got one that is there, they know I should have died. But one night on a little country road, a suicidal teenager. Didn't love life, didn't love nothing because I felt nobody loved me. And God came into that car, and I tell you, and I wasn't praying, Pastor. I wasn't repeating at that moment. But that night, 1130, all by myself, riding down that little country road, thoughts of suicide going through my head. God entered that car. And can I tell you, he told me that he loved me. I'll never forget. And I didn't surrender to him that day, but I never forgot that somebody loved me. Now it seems like you can't go anywhere. Turn around where I said, brother. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's extended my family. And y'all are truly family. I love each and every one of you. Amen. If you pray this to the home, me, my wife, Pastor, Apostle, we love you, man of God. Thank you so much for speaking into my life. Amen. Me and Pastor had some phone calls. Not as much as we should, but we had some phone calls for hours. And you just let you, God just used me. Just, just minister to me. And I thank God for that, brother. I thank God for the seed. I thank God for your faith. Amen. I thank God that you stepped out. Amen. And even in those hard times when it didn't look like what God showed you, you were faithful. Yeah. And because of your faithfulness, God is going to give you the increase. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you got plans for this upcoming year. And I know God has showed you some things. But I believe that you're going to experience even greater things than you see. I believe there's some stuff that God had that you not even walk into yet, and you just gonna walk in. And God's gonna say, This is for you. Amen. 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 Give your apostle a hand one more time.
as we get ready to, uh, if anybody has any presentations or anything I want to say to our uh, pastor and our apostle, Javon, is Brother Javon around? As soon as Javon come, uh, you can do your presentation after that, before that one.
My wife, she truly appreciates it as well. My children, they love you. Um, you have been nothing but a good um, example for, for me, for my family. Thank you so much. We love you. Yeah, I give you a second. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor, for putting up with us all these years. <laughs> Loving on us. Thank you so much for the example. Thank you for the integrity that you carry in your life each and every day. You can see it. Um, not just inside the walls, but outside the walls as well. We thank God for you. And thank you for loving on us. Thank you for just being there for us when we always do. We love you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hallelujah. Continue to seek his face. Lay before him there. Call out to him. I'm grateful for how you teach us how to live on you. How to cast our cares unto the Lord. Walk according to his faith. There. Now forgive the benefit. Always keep in place. Always be in right standing with God. Never give up on the promise. I'm grateful to call you my pastor. Through Jesus Christ. The blood wash. The spirit of the living God. The true living God that lives inside of you from Him. It's an honor. It's an honor that you are chosen by a holy God. And I'm so grateful that you get up day and you pray for us day and night. You see his face to bring us word throughout the week. I'm just grateful and I'm just thankful. Continue in faith with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Apostle for 19 years. And I've been here for 19. Um, my first step pastor on one of the channels. Uh, that's how I got here. Nobody invited me. I listened to the preaching message. And as I say, the message spoke to me. Glory to God. I said, well, I have to go to this church to hear this pastor. I said, because you know, we hear pastors. And, um, anyway, I just think you want to send me to this church. Glory to God. I came from another city. Praise God. This the message is. But I thank you for being real. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The correction that hits all of us is what people have said. But I thank the Lord for Pastor. Um, I know a lot of times when we pray, so we have to, you know, we pray for ourselves. Glory to God. But for me, I just keep it real. Sometimes I want the pastor to, you know, sanction what I pray for. Glory to God. So I just say, like, you know, like, for me, um, like sometimes having like a medical checkup or something, Pastor, we'll say, well, we don't have that here. Right. Glory to God. I'm thankful to be under um, a ministry where I know that when he prays about something, it, 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 you know, if things happen, Glory to God, God listens. You have to live a holy, consecrated life. Glory to God. How we for God to hear and to, to, you know, to answer prayers. And I, and I thank God, you know, for, um, for the life that you live, glory to God. How we live that uh, we're corrected, glory to God, and we were sick. I know one time I was past the paper, he said, we don't have that here. Glory to God. And I had to go back for a procedure. And I don't know if my number was either high or low or something happened. And the doctor, he looked at me, it was concerning eyesight. And um, it wasn't a blood hole, it was something else that the enemy was trying to put on me. And I had prayed about it, and so I did catch the past. He said, he said, he said, he said we don't have that here. So I had to go back that week, and when I went, the doctor, he looked, he was looking for things that happened. You know how they do. You know, when I, in my spirit, you know, my whole spirit, I said, we don't have that here. Glory to God, I caught hold of that phrase, we don't have that here. Amen. Glory to God, and it didn't happen. And, you know, things were normal. He said, well, I'll see you next year. Glory to God. There have been other, maybe health scares and all like that, and... The Lord will give something to the pastor, or uh, sometimes I say, Pastor, I'm going out, you know, for prayer. And I thank God that things didn't happen. Yes. Glory to God. I'm grateful to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. To be up under a ministry and a pastor, an apostle. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where, if you know, if we learn how to live right, glory to God. He teaches us, you know, glory to God. And He's an example for us. No, yes. He has nothing nowhere. Glory to God. I've been here for a few years. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of my friends, they just dropped me off. Hallelujah. Just because this is where I am. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Right. Said, where do you go? Because they want me to what, come back and, you know, whatever. You know, but I don't get that anymore because they know that where I am, you know, I'm kind of, you know, it's solid. Somebody said, it's solid. They know I know that things are solid. I praise and I thank God. I usually travel by myself, and he knows, glory to God, that, you know, I, I like for it to be solid and true. It might be tight, but it's right. Glory to God. I praise and I thank the Lord for you. Glory to God. My God, he just, he let the Lord God let me in. Yes. Nobody, because nobody even knew, you know, they didn't even, it just happened that way. Glory to God. How I, 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 I thank you. Came in by myself. Glory to God. I got somewhere else to go. Praise God. My backup is here. Glory to God. But she knows I came here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. My cousin is here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But she knows that I, how I am. Glory to God. And I just, you know, tell me to go wherever the Lord has you to go. So I thank the Lord for you for 19 years of yeah. I listen. I may not sit here in my seat all the time, but I listen. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I listen to what you know. And I'm not. Even though I am, you know, older and all, I think we have real distance because we've been in church for 19 years and we know it all. Right. Glory to God. Because sometimes it, it's not that way. We don't know it all. Glory to God. I thank God for your study, your steadfastness, and I praise and I thank you. Amen. Amen.
words connected, reconnected. He said something to me that blessed my soul. He said, I remember you used to call me Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> that was so long ago. But God is rich in his mercy. Man of God, you're doing a great work. Stay on the wall. Continue to let God use you. And he's using you mightily. Amen. I wish the church could have come with us. With my wife, I heard y'all already say it. She said it. And we love you, brother. I just wanted to show you that in a small way, how much we appreciate you. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. And those that was with us on last year, we ate good last year. So it's always a pleasure and a privilege. I'm just glad to be here. I'm just glad to be here. 19 years, I was sharing with one of the brothers uh, this morning. I said, you know, each year when you're going to, when you come into a new year, you're going into unfamiliar territory. Because we're going into year 20. I've never passed it for 20 years. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. I, I can only speak about passion for 19. Yes. So 20 is new. So I need to depend totally on God. Yes. If we don't celebrate 20 yes. in next October. Yes. Y'all with me? Yes. So uh, I, I thank the Lord. He brought us from a long way. And I am just grateful. I don't have a lot to say. I just want to thank the Lord. And so many brothers, I mean, just everybody just surprised us. There's some other, other people that wanted to be here that could not be here due to the, the we have service on Sunday morning, but they send their love, a lot of them are watching. It's good to see all the young people that came to serve, the choir, the song, and everybody just did a great job. Amen. The musicians, can we give them a hand? Amen. Those, those are our very own, very own musicians. Those young men grew up in the church. And to hear my nephew get up there and say the things that he said. Amen. I didn't recognize him at first. He looked like he stepped out of a, 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 in, a, a in old magazine or something. Who is that guy? Praise the Lord. I didn't know who that man was. Man, he got sunglasses. I, I'm looking for the sun. Amen. So we just thank the Lord. And so many of my guests, so many of my, good to see you. I, I don't know you, but hey. <laughs> oh, that's just, huh? That's just super Lord. We're praying the Lord.
God, we're just going to walk into a new year with faith in you, God. Lord, I pray God is blessing over this house. God, I pray that you would use it in a mighty way. God, I pray, Lord, as we go back in fellowship, Lord, that you would bless in the fellowship, God, that you would just unite us even stronger than we've ever been, Father. God, I pray that you bless the food and bless those that, Lord, that prepare it, Father God, and I pray that you would just use it for the nourishment of our bodies. God, we love you. God, we praise you in the saints' city. Amen. Amen.